What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I wanted to talk about passion and more specifically how passion plays a role, can play a role in our careers. This is inspired by a conversation I had recently with a coworker who shared to me his thoughts on passion and how he feels like if someone is passionate about what they do, then they're going to be better at it. Then then they are going to work their hardest at it. And if someone is not passionate, then they're going to do the bare minimum. Now, I don't think that it can be necessarily denied that if someone is passionate about something, they tend to use that passion as a driver to do what needs to be done. But I feel like there were some fallacies in what he was sharing and also just some things that honestly are totally irrelevant in, or at least in my opinion, totally irrelevant in the work scene. When we come to work, and I shared a lot of these thoughts with him, when we come to work, at least when I come to work, I'm primarily coming there to get paid. I'm coming there (laughs) because I need to do a set of tasks so that I can get paid. I'm not coming there for fun. If the job were to stop paying me, I wouldn't be doing this anymore. And I said that to illustrate to him, passions in my mind don't necessarily tie into work and they don't necessarily have to in order for someone to be great at their job. A job to me is quite transactional. There are a set of responsibilities that you need to complete and you have to report to someone who's then going to give you a performance review. You have to meet those expectations. And if you don't, hopefully there's a conversation, there's adjustments, and then you move on from that. It's not necessarily about passion to me. It's about, did you do what you're supposed to do Yes or no. And so this stemmed from us having a conversation, a one-on-one conversation. And in that, he talked about interview questions. And one of the things he expressed to me is he would want to gauge someone's passion for the particular role that they would be interviewing for. And I found that both interesting, but also alarming. Now, I will say for myself, the type of work I do I have become passionate about it. I've become so passionate about it that I have a YouTube channel that is dedicated to talking just about my profession. So I do actually enjoy it. But if I were to be initially interviewed and someone's trying to question my passion for it, they wouldn't necessarily see it from the jump, especially when I was coming out of college. I didn't know exactly what it was I was going to be doing anyways. Once more, even in this part of my career, I'm now 10 years into my career and into the profession that I've been working in. If I were to come to know that the interviewer was trying to suss out how passionate I was as a way to inform how hard I would work, I would have a problem with that. Because to me, passion and hard work are not one and the same. Passion runs out frankly. I've seen this in myself. There have been projects that I've picked up to do in my personal life that when I tried to turn these things into side hustles that I could potentially monetize, I found that by even doing that, it felt like an obligation to do these things. And I no longer wanted to do these things. A good example of this is TikTok. I started to create TikToks and more specifically like travel content TikToks, like short vlogs, that kind of thing. I used to do them primarily on my YouTube channel. This was before TikTok even existed. And I just got tired of when I was on my travels and on my trips having to record vertically, record horizontally, and just everything that comes with, if you are someone who's ever done any type of content creation, and especially when you're doing content creation out in the wild, having to be preoccupied 
by it sucks sometimes. Now, it didn't start like that. Initially, it started as a passion for me. YouTube started as a passion for me. And I've now been on YouTube in November of this year. It will be 10 years of me creating content for YouTube. Now, if you have been following me closely, then you will know that there's been lulls. It has not been something that I've posted every week or even every month at points because at some point I did lose the passion for it. And even more recently with this podcast, I was running off of passion that I had for it. And then at some point it started to feel like an obligation and I pretty quickly had to change my narrative around it such that. I could remember this is something that's meant to be an outlet for me. This is not something I'm obligated to do, but I am obligated to take care of myself and to do things that feel good to me. I have to take care of me. Sometimes I may be lazy and I have a whole episode where I talk about sometimes you don't want to take care of yourself. Sometimes you don't want to do it, but ultimately it's my responsibility. And so if I feel good doing something, then I want to be able to do that. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate into the working world. I'm there out of obligation. I am not there primarily because of passion. Now, I'm grateful that I do have passion for the work that I do. But even if I didn't, and I didn't for some time, I was still great at my job. And I still believe people can be great at their job. In fact, in some cases, they might be better at it. Because here's my theory. When we are passionate about something, we can tie parts of our identity into that thing that we're passionate about. And when we start tying parts of ourselves into something external to, external to ourselves, we start attaching expectations, we start making assumptions, And if things go left for us, we start taking things personally. If we are able to depersonalize situations, meaning we're also not necessarily as passionate about them, then we can look at them in more of an objective way. I went through this myself when I was going through the situation of having been let go from my job, which I've shared in a previous episode. And I shared how a lot of maybe a lot is a strong word, (laughs) part of who I was and part of who, what my identity was at that time was wrapped up in the work that I did and how hard I worked. And so when things came crashing down, it felt like a part of me came crashing down as well. And so this doesn't mean that in my current role, I completely disassociate myself, but I do have very clear boundaries around this profession. And for me, it's more so about the skill sets that I get to employ as a part of this profession rather than the profession itself. And I want to highlight that because my skills of being detail oriented, of liking to organize things, of liking to speak and speak in front of people, that kind of thing, that can be translated to a lot of different professions. And so just from that angle alone, if the interviewer were then to question me in a way to try to suss out if I'm passionate about this particular role, I don't know exactly how I would feel about that. But especially with him sharing that he feels that if someone is passionate, they're going to work harder. I was getting tripped up. I was getting tripped up because I I felt like I felt like when people were talking about the whole quiet quitting, there was like a whole debate that came around quiet quitting. And in that debate, people were from my from from my understanding, some people were misunderstanding what was happening. Some people were hearing quiet quitting and they were thinking people are going to start doing the bare minimum. Other people heard quiet quitting and what they thought of was 
oh, people are going to stop going above and beyond. So we have people who are not using the same, who are using the same terms, but are using two very different understandings of those terms. And I just got the sense, I didn't mention it to him, but I got the sense that he was probably on the side of the folks who were like, oh, quiet quitting? Like, what do you mean you don't want to go above and beyond? What do you mean I don't want to go go above and beyond? I'm not getting paid to go above and beyond. Why are you expecting that I go above and beyond for this paycheck? And I don't say that in any way of like being ungrateful, but... We already spend, if you work full time, you already spend a majority of your day, like the daylight, especially with this daylight savings, the daylight working. So I almost feel like, how dare you, how dare anybody feel entitled to your time once you've already done your time? Now I'm a salary worker. And so the expectation of me as a salary worker is I work until my work is done. Sometimes that means that I'm working a full eight hours a day. Sometimes that means I have more flexibility in my day. As long as my work is done, that is what I am measured by. And so this idea that we now need to go above and beyond leaves me in a state of confusion, of a bit of irritation, And also as a side note, it made me feel grateful that he's not in a position to do any hiring because I do take, (laughs) as you can hear in the tone of my voice, as you can hear in the tone of my voice, I do take issue with that thought process that you have to be passionate about your work to do well. I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I think it can help. But for the reasons I mentioned earlier, I think it can sometimes hinder people as well. So with that being said, something for you all to consider is what role does passion play in your career? Now, you may listen to this and you may say, wait a minute, I love what I do. And it doesn't get tied up in my ego and I do great. Great. I'm not saying that passion should not exist in what you do. But what I am saying is that I personally don't think it has to in order for you to be great at what you do. So consider what role passion plays in your career. And if it is something that you feel like you need to have as a part of your career, because also something else that comes up for me. As a millennial, a lot of the messaging that I got in my early 20s was to monetize your passion. It was either said directly like that, monetize your passion or or monetize your dreams, just how to associate money with your dreams. And so unfortunately, what I am seeing is that sometimes that leads us to no longer have passion for, for those things because anything that you work at now becomes an obligation. So consider for yourself, the role of passion in your career. Thank you all for listening. Also, please rate this episode if you can. If you're on YouTube, I know you can give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, you can comment below on YouTube. I believe Spotify, like Anchor, where I upload this, has some capabilities for that as well. So if you see an option to rate the podcast, please do that. It gives me feedback and lets me know that you are enjoying what I'm sharing with you all. And I will speak to you all in my next one.